Youth Wins team. We're here today and our topic is you can have what you say. Um, we'll start off with a prayer and then we'll get to our study. Dear Heavenly Father, we glorify your holy name. We thank you, Father, that you're more than a we, you make us more than conquerors through Christ Jesus our Lord. We thank you, Father, that we're more than conquerors. We continue to say that because when we say it many times, it becomes a part of our soul and it be, gets lodged in our spirit so that we know that. We know that we are what God calls us as Abraham's uh, promise. He had to say it over and over and we agree with that. We more than we're more than conquerors through Christ Jesus our Lord. We thank you, Father, for revelation, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So our study today, over the years, I've always wondered. Well, we know I didn't wonder this. Abraham and Sarah are really the patriarchs of our faith. They're the kind of foundation of the building of what faith is. And I always kind of wondered about like what why he was called and what did he do to change Abraham's name I I've heard different things but today we want to go kind of back to the Hebrew see what happened to their names how it affected them and it's really kind of exciting because what happened to them can happen for us it's kind of the those yeah, give us God's steps. no respecter of persons so we'll we'll go off the, to begin with we're going to be in Genesis and we're going to have the call of Abraham by God God is a respecter of faith and that's and Abraham is the father of faith in Genesis 17 1 through 5 King James Version and when Abram was 90 years old and nine the Lord appeared to Abraham, or Abram, and said to him, I am Almighty God, El Shaddai. Walk before me and be thou perfect, and I will make my covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, Behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. Right, so we'll go on to our next page says, in Genesis 17, God describes the sign of the covenant. He will make a contract with Abraham and his offspring. He gives Abraham a new name to symbolize his destiny as the patriarch of God's chosen people. In that, in the way of these amazing events, it's easy to overlook the important fact that Abraham's wife, Sarah, one of Israel's matriarchs, also received a new name and a promise. And the name Abram, and you can see it there in Hebrew, and it's written in an English Hebrew, I guess, to compose, it is composed of two words, of Abram. And they mean something like exalted father. But Abraham, on the other hand, derives from the word of Haman, as explained by the phrase, because I give you as a father of multitude of nations, Genesis 17, 5. So a one letter change makes a big difference and that letter is h right the letter is h ha it's like, the fifth letter in the hebrew is ha right which it's kind of like the breath of god right and and the, the letter five is symbolic of uh, our, mankind of grace of grace that's of right grace. five is the the grace so it's kind of interesting he would put 
that in there. But there's a lot more to the letter than just grace. But grace is a great thing because we're seeing that Abraham and Sarah want a child. child and it would be with God's grace that they would be able to, in their old age, have a child. But let's see what he did with Sarai's name. What Sarah. Did he, Sarah. Let's see what he did with her. It says in Genesis 17, 15 through 16, Then God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah, Ha, shall be her name, and I will bless her and also give you a son by her. Then I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of peoples shall be from her. Notice that Sarai parallels Abraham's re renaming in meaning. Both are called by their new names because of their future roles as father and mother of many nations. Sarai, you can see it in Hebrew, and then Sarah, which has the uh, ha in the, in the in, Hebrew is written from left to right, and, and like uh, English is from, from left to right, but uh, Hebrew is from right to left. And are different forms of the same Hebrew word that basically means princess, woman of strength. It is likely that Sarai is the po possessive form of Sarah, my Sarah. And Sarah, therefore, signifies that her strength does not belong exclusively to her immediate family, but to the future nation of Israel even the world at large. As in the case of Abraham, the changing of a single letter, H, makes all the difference. Right, and that's kind of interesting to think because I, I think I always heard about Abraham's having an am in it, but really Abram already had the am in it. Yeah. And so really it's... It's really the H change. Change because everybody... I'd, huh. heard, I'd heard people before say... That with Moses, he said, "I'm the great I am," and so, right. and so they, they tried to it make was that the am, but if we connection go, to his name, but it isn't that. That isn't the connection. That's not the connection because God chose to add because it was huh. God who renamed him. So there, there was a reason why he did it, and it's it's really kind of an exciting reason, and it's right. It's a very profound reason. thing that God did for Abraham from Ar Abram. Right, because if you recall, many years passed, because we can kind of briefly do the story. He got the call, leave your father. He he was called to do all these things, and a lot of time passed, and they kind of took things in their own hand, and he took her handmaiden, and they had a child that wasn't really the child God had promised them. And finally, he God comes to them and goes, okay, to get this to happen, I'm going to have to have you change your name so you get it in you and let's see what the significance of the was what is this what is so significant about this one letter that changes everything it says uh let's let's study the letter h or ha and it's the fifth letter of the hebrew alphabet and the ha represents divine revelation it is the symbol of the repentant man who belongs or beholds the revelation of God. Ha is spiritual life, the breath of God. That is the essence of all creation. As when he created uh, the earth, he did it with his mouth. He made all substance with his mouth. Ha is also connected to the light spoken in of uh, five times in the book of Genesis on the first day of creation. The sacred name of God called the Tara Gamma Dun is spelled with four Hebrew letters Yad He Vaha He. When God changes changes Abraham and Sarai's 
or Abram in Sarai's name, to Abraham in Sarah, he inserted the Hebrew letter He for his divine, from his divine name. The word He has three meanings. The first is, here is, in the verse. Here is the seed for you. The next is to be disturbed, as it states in Daniel, uh, Daniel 7, and in Daniel was disturbed. And the third is behold, as in behold, this is our God, which refers to beholding a revelation. These three definitions converge on Abraham and Sarah. When they were born and, gave, and came into the world, God gives them seeds, words to say, the potential to be pro productive and make good in their, of their lives. Many times, however, we be become disturbed, confused, and lose sight of our objectives. Eventually, through Abraham and Sarah... Eventually, though. Though, Abraham and Sarah will come to do teshva and acknowledge their creator. They will then behold the revelation of God, the fact that Sarah, Sarah, or Sarah will give birth to a son. Right, so here we kind of see this. It's really something for us to grasp for us because the Bible gives us the seed, the word. So The word. Right, so in the beginning of the story of Abraham, he, he's given a call. And so that's the word that he should stand on. He, he should have stood on it. Uh, leave your father well, and and all these things. He, well, he the, the word, word. The, we have, when we say faith, we're really saying the words of God. And then we have belief. We have belief of the words of God. And so when we, ha words are very important in our, in our realm of existence. So we need to know the truth that comes out of the words. And trust it. And trust it. Right. So then what happened to Sarah? So they got the word and, and really they were obedient to begin with because Abraham does leave his father. He does go away. Right, he's obedient. For a but while, but then what happens? He, he gets, gets disturbed. disturbed. Oh, he, he gets disturbed what, in his actions. What is he disturbed about? Well, you know, he... he uh, and so was Sarai at the time was disturbed. Abram and Sarai. Abram yeah. and Sarai, Sarai were disturbed, and she was trying to make a remedy, and he was agreeing with that remedy, right, and the word which seemed, wasn't God's blessing. He, he, God didn't say to do that. But the, it seems that instead of going back to God, which is what we should do in praying, they decided to take things in their own hands, which is which what that's we, where we decide the, to do. The destruction comes because we take things in our own hands, our own thoughts, in our own uh, understanding. We, right. we or he was disturbed seek and they, the understanding of God only. Right. And, and I, in a sense, maybe they were fearful it wouldn't happen. We don't really know all their thoughts or what they said, but it appears that he might not have thought it was happening because when he got to Egypt, instead of going, this is my wife, and, you know, it's my wife, he says it's my sister, and then she's almost because taken away. Because of fear, probably right, because of fear. because he was afraid he would kill, get killed. Because, you know, he didn't give, going, uh, God sent me here, and uh, it's like when Jesus said, uh, we're going to the other side, they got all upset when it got to be a storm, and he's going, why are you getting upset? We, I said, we're going to the other side. So it's the same thing with Abraham and or Abraham, Abram and, and, Abram and Sarai, Sarai yeah. is that we are, I don't care how much time it takes, it's going to happen. And God said it's going to happen so that it's going to happen. And we have to keep the faith as uh, what's her name always says. Uh, that's uh, Amanda Grace. <laughs> she says, keep the faith. Meaning, right. keep the word before us. Don't let the word of God depart for your eyes, for his life and his health and healing to all your flesh. 
Right. The word makes the things change. Right. And I think with all the prophecy, which prophecy is really good, but sometimes prophecy takes a while, just like the prophecy for Abraham. It, well, it there's many time. prophets that prophesied things that haven't come to fruition yet. Right. And like so, the revelations. So they, they got disturbed. They thought, well, this is never going to happen. And, and probably Sarah went like, it's my fault. And. It would appear that it would well, be her fault because she whatever he was her able thoughts to were. he was able well it was past her time of having children that she didn't think she could have children any longer so she thought well he can still have children so we'll give him the handmaiden well he so said they it, did yeah so they so did. he did that which was a but mistake but then the very exciting thing is the fact that God put the H in their name which the H was a revelation. And the revelation he did, like at the, when he changed their name, he did right. multiple things. He changed their name, which told them, this is going to happen. I'm involved. Because they knew what the meaning of, because they were Hebrew, so they knew what the word meant. And the word meant a revelation. And he, he did several things. He changed their name. He had Abram or Abraham now, circumcise himself and everybody. Right. So that was kind of a definite thing, something's up. For men, that right. would be a definite thing. And then he gave them kind of something to hold on. The revelation is, in a year, you will have a baby. It was yeah, like he gave them time there. there. He gave them yeah. time. Within a year, you'll have within a year you'll have your baby. Right. So and they so, go, oh, okay. Well, it was a revelation for everybody because everybody that saw the letter added and the change in the name would know that it could it signify was a, a revelation. Great change. A revelation. It was so, a revelation. Right. And it so was understanding uh, above above all comprehension. Right. And so that's what we need to do with the word of God. We need to have the word and skip the disturbed part that it's not happening right, yeah. and just go to the that's, happening. That's just a, a disturbance to you to the truth of God in your life, working in your life. Well let's if go if God on. said it as Abraham, as somebody we know, God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. So that's what Abraham and Sarai, or Abram and Sarai should have said. Sarah, well, yeah. They, well, they, Abraham, God said it, I don't care how long it takes. Well, Abraham and Sarah finally got it. And so yeah, what was it. some of the things, well, he did say, I will do this for you. So we're going to go over what God said he would do for Abraham, and we're the Heirs. heirs to We're the, the heirs. covenant too. So let's see it what says we that can. In the New Testament, we are we, heirs in Christ Jesus. So what can we look forward Abraham. to? What can we look forward to? What will God do for us? Well, God will. It says, "I will show you where to go." In other words, in your life, you will direct your path. I will make you great. In other words, God, you know, you're you're great. First of all, when you get born again. You are great, greater than anybody else uh, except uh, the body of Christ. And right, you're and born again. You're the righteousness in Christ God, Jesus. Christ it's Jesus, not just right. you. You're great and then because you of get, that. And you get you got the Holy Spirit working in you, and then you get filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And then you're you're supercharged there. Okay, so we'll just read through the and list, then, and then we'll go over. I will again. bless you. I will make your name great. I will make you a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. So I hear that a lot with with the the, the children of Israel. They get you know people say that, but really, the the body of Christ has that same blessing. The I'll bless you that bless you and curse those that curse you, and I will bless all the people on earth through you through the body of Christ. Right, and isn't that an awesome thing to know that that's, we, we can share the gospel? That's more than enough. Right, and as we share the gospel and as we do what God, because it says he'll send us where we should go, and so we know where to go if we ask him. So the important part is to ask him. Like Abraham talked with God, listened, knew where to go. He said he'll make you great. His name was great, will be great. And we're really great, but God gets all the glory. So that that's the important part. Right, we're, yeah. We're, we're, he makes us great so that we can be a blessing to the nation. He's not making us great so we can be great and think great yeah, things about we, ourselves. we got to have the, the yeah. fruit of the Spirit work in our lives. Right. And we need to indulge. And I'm going to talk about that in my book that we're coming up Right, because we, we want to be a blessing to everyone. So, yeah. And God wants to bless us so we can be a blessing. So we have uh, one more verse to go to. 
And that's uh, Mark 11, 22 through 26, the King James Version. And Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. Some people uh, translate that as have the God kind of faith. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. And when ye shall stand praying, forgive, if ye have aught against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. So we need right. to make sure that we are walking in the fruit of the Spirit and we're uh, if somebody does something against us, we forgive them. Doesn't mean you forget it necessarily, but you you have a experience right. you need to uh, stand or bring before the Father on and give direction. Right. Definitely. Right, and it, it's so good to know that just as Abraham ha became the father of faith, we can use faith to be just as great as Abraham, because Jesus said. Um, just as great of things, you'll do greater things than yeah, I've done. Yeah. You, so, we, that's the body of Christ will do greater things than he did when he was here on earth. Right. So we have that to stand on. And so we have the word, the seed, because it said in the, God gave us the seed right. and the seed is the word. Because as we all recall from our previous lesson, you can always go back and listen to it. The sower sows the word. That's Jesus' great commission was sowing the word. It, right. That is what we sow. And when we sow it, we can have a hundredfold. And a hundredfold is not a hundred it's times. Hundred, I say percentage. Percentage of your word. Right. Because well, if we look at it, God said to Abraham, your seed will be as many as the stars in the sky. And I don't even know what fold that is, but that's a big fold. <laughs> It's like, right. woo, look at all the well, people you know, that are here. When Jesus was here, they said he was, uh, he was anointed with, with, uh, with uh, overwhelming anointing. In other words, he, was, he, he had that in his life. He had all nine, uh, seven, or seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. And it says that the body of Christ has that same anointing of the nine, seven gifts, seven or is it nine? It's the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Well, but but I, I'll go back to our lesson. The the which is the fifth letter is grace. But if you look at a lot of the things that Jesus did, it involved like the number five. He had one meal, like the loaves, right? And he fed five thousand. And yeah, the five. It, it's, it's another kind of five. The there, grace. Grace. Five five loaves. Uh, two fishes and five. Uh, barley loaves, it said. Right, and and then it fed five thousand, and the, the with the talent he gave five talents, and it he gave they did a good job, and they got five more talents. Right, and with um, Joseph with his younger son, not his younger son, but his younger brother Benjamin, right. he gave five times as much. So it, it kind of shows that their grace, what grace does for you, and grace, that's what the right. letter. Is but you're acting on God's word gives you grace. Right. So we all know that God did what that says. Even if it's not in your name, you don't happen to have an H in your name, then it, it's still there, still for you to well, have. Christ has a word, uh, a Greek word. It's a Greek word. It uh, uh, has H in it. And, and obviously we're all the body of Christ. So I would think there might be some connection there with an H. Jehovah. Is that or Jehovah. Jehovah has the H in it. Yeah, but Jehovah is no. a kind of a it's no. Yod He Yod -He -Vod -He that has Yod -He -Vod -He. the Yod Right, and we're the and righteousness. It has two H's actually, in it. we're the Yod we're we're the righteousness and Yod He Vavad He, which right. has the Yod -He -Vod -He. H's. Yod -He -Vod -He. So we have right. we That's have the true name of in the in the in the uh, King James it gave that that word for God's name 
Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D in the King right, James. Right, so it, ha it has the letter. And since we're the righteousness in yod heh vav right. we have that. We are. Right, we're so the it, body it, of yod heh vav Right, so we have been given a word, a seed. And if we stick with the word and seed, it will become a revelation and we will have what we say. Right. We will have, but it's not what we say. It is what we say, but it's based on what God said. Well... It's not just anything we say. Well, yeah, anything you say has power. Well, it has power, but... Eventually, it, unless it, if it has no believing in it, and then it has no power. But the believing well, gives it power. Well, but what it really does is the Word of God. If you say to the mountain, be removed, it's based on the, the Word of God. So you can say to sickness, be removed, be well by the 39 stripes of Jesus, be and removed. And when we quote the Word of God, then it can we're happen. manifesting, we're prophesying in a sense... The word of God into the physical so right. that it will manifest for the body of Christ. Well, so we move on. We need to move on because we, we try to stay on schedule. And so it's we're, we have a book this week, which we like. We always like to give you a book. Uh, we'll put a link to it um, for you to get it on our website, truthwins.com. You can go to the shop store and just click on the picture and it'll take you there or go to your library. We, we're... We don't care where how you get it. Borrow it from well, a friend. This, as all of these, these are all great over books. the top books. Yes, we <laughs> just want you to read it. If we if we could, we would just give you all books. But yeah, but that's well, not, we could. Well, if, well, well, that's but, not what God's told us to do. So yeah, then he if he does, we'll, he hasn't we said do that, that yet. Hasn't but said doesn't that say he yet, didn't. But so, we won't say it. So we we hope you will read the books because we're just giving you little snippets, and there's just so much in it. And as you read them. Like in the one of the things I did, I don't know if I've done it yet. In the yeah, in the back of this book, um, we write like when I read it, and I read this in 1999 the first time because whoop whoop it's, I guess if you look at it, it has a different cover different cover because we we had the book a long time but yeah. we decided it's never you should just keep reading it years ago we uh, there was a, uh, a an option on uh, Rama Bible Church to buy right. every book. Of Kenneth E. Hagen. And we did. And it was like a good package. There was a deal. gigantic box showed up at our house one day. And so we. <laughs> and we, we have all these books. And I so mean, we went I, through I read them. them, a lot of them, but I just decided it's like God told me this year start reading them again, get them out, because it's just different things pop out, different parts of your life. You have different things and you learn new things, and it's pretty amazing. So, what are we going to learn from this well, book? Well, it, 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 it's basically. Uh, provides the seven fundamental facts of faith which enable us to change the, our circumstances and move mountains in our lives. And, and, and really, it's, it's very, for, for somebody that hasn't really studied a whole lot, well, even if you have studied it, it's good that you do it. But I'm saying that for somebody, in it, the first chapter in, the, in this book, and uh, the first chapter is ever... Every believer has faith. We all know that, well, we should all know that when you get born again, you have been given a measure of faith. Right. To it get says that, that in the word. With, yeah. To get that. You have a measure of faith. Right. But if you don't manage your, your life to indulge in the word of God, it, it, you know, you got, you, you're a Christian, but if you get, you know, 50 years down the road and you haven't really done any more, you're still a baby in Christ. Things are not going to act. Things are not going to work for you unless you indulge and study the word of God. So, and, and, and the second chapter is ever increasing faith. The, the body of Christ, when they, after they become born again and filled with the Holy Spirit, etc. Uh, they need to study and make them uh, study to make themselves approved. It says right, that, it's the only way to please God is with faith. Right, and, and, and it says get faith, faith without works is dead. dead. So and you in want Romans faith, ten seventeen, faith. faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And you, right. so what it, we're basically saying in, cha in chapter two is that we need to increase in faith. We need, how do we do that? We study the word. We meditate on the word. Medi meditate on scriptures. And study the word, and really, that's what we're doing with all these uh, these uh, videos for you guys to help you get Learn. there. Get the body of Christ needs to be taken over the world, 
Right. Basically. Well, and we, we can do it if we just know God right. gave and us the Right, we have word. the power. It's just like, that... like Abraham got the, the message, for the word, the seed, and then he got the revelation, it's true, it's going to happen in a year, and it, it happens. And God's word never falls short. Right. It never falls short. That's, right. you know, you, you, you got to come to that. God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. No, right, and then, God, then you use your yeah, faith. And, and then I've said many times on these... That in uh, Psalms 23, 4 says, Yes, I walk through the valley, shadowed out, and fear no evil, for thou art with me, Lord. And then the rod and the staff is the word of God and the spirit. In other words, the Holy Spirit interacting with you. And you, we need to practice that. We need to, he said, he, if you come nigh to him, he'll come nigh to you. So you, we all need to make that a daily involvement, uh, talk to him. Not pray necessarily, just talk to him. You know what I mean? Or just listen. Listen to the voice. You can hear it. It's a still small voice. It, you know, some people get, you know, right, a little right. better, well, more, no, but I, I think can't as say you better, practice it, you, you, more you say, experience. And, and if you want to have really strong faith, you can practice like when you go shopping, let me have a good parking place. Little thing. Right. And you know, Hagen had, I think it was eight or nine times, Jesus came and, but it, it didn't. It wasn't that he was just a baby Christian and Jesus showed up. No, ba Jesus showed up because he spent days and hours and years and effort to become more like Jesus, knowing that he is the, uh, and he taught and he gave all the revelation. Okay, so we, God we, gave him revelation of things so he needs to tell. There to learn well, there's, there's a, the, but one I wanted to focus on, God even kind of said, you know, what is everybody looking for? Uh, uh, to, to change in their life. Not only do they need to become a born again Christian, but they need to be uh, one of the, one of the keys in life is to have finances. And he gives in chapter six, in other words, if you're getting all five before that working well in your life, then you, he gives you the, the clues the, well, and, you can do them all at once. You can well, still you read them all. Yeah. You could read this book probably. Right, but we can start doing all of them. Two days. Yeah, you can, but you can start doing. You don't have to wait till you get all five. Well, but you don't above. need to jump ahead. Yeah, you but, can do, well, read them unless all. You, and, well, you could if you're like because now with inflation, some people may need to jump. Well, you could read that, but don't forget stuff. to read the the first six about <laughs> knowing faith. But because I, the, yeah. I think it's a building blocks there right, but, to get there. And, and, and in, in finances, there was many uh, experiences that, that uh, Kenneth E. Hagin came up with. And uh, because uh, Jesus talked to him and he had the Holy Spirit and, and uh, get involved with him and all that. And uh, he, had, he gives you a lot of experience. He gave his experiences. You could have, uh, it, you know, you could go, oh, yeah, that happened to me too. You know, one of those kind of things. And it says many people... Have forgot, uh, have gotten saved, but they're never thought about using their faith beyond believing in, for salvation. So you got to believe. You got to have your faith beyond salvation. You got to, you know, for healing, and you should have it also for your your prosperity. And I'm not talking about necessarily just money, but I'm saying prosperity comes in many forms, like your you you know. Uh, you could probably come up with all the forms as well as I could. But it also says that that there, if we're willing and obedient, we'll eat the good of the land. So how do we get willing and obedient? We know the will of God and we act upon the word of God. We meditate on the word of God. We continue to grow in the, in the knowledge and the wisdom of God by knowing his word. And his word brings all the, 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 it brings faith and it brings us to the point of being able to be, will, you're willing, the willing to do the words that you've learned by the word of God and the Holy Spirit telling you, and you are obedient to the word of God. Now, uh, remember uh, Saul, he, it says it's better to be obedient than to sacrifice. Than to sacrifice. Right. It said that to King Saul. The, was it, I, one of the well, because, scriptures well, because or the one pro of the, the prophet prophets said, well, he was late, so he did it for him. And he's going, eh, 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 you can't do it for me. You're not anointed as a prophet, so you can't do the sacrifice. And so basically he told him, obedience is better than sacrifice. sacrifice. Well, and it's kind of 
along the line of what Abraham and Sarah did. They decided to take it in their own hands instead of letting God do it. And it kind of made a mess for them. So we don't want to take it in our own hands, but we don't want to, if we have a question, it's kind of like maybe Adam and Eve should have said, wait a minute, uh, you snake, you serpent. Yeah, uh, we we're need to discern it and the Holy Spirit will guide us. Right, because we, we want God's direction in it. And then it, it can come, your, well, it says bring your tithes into the storehouse. So you have to be willing and obedient, and that would be part of the That's obedient part of the and the willing. word of God. Right, and then he'll open the windows of heaven. So, and then you, then, because one of the things that happened with Abraham, it says you'll be a blessing to the nation. Well, if God blesses you with more than you have room to receive, then you're going to give it out to others. It well, can be yeah. all and, kinds you know, of ways. The United States of America is the biggest giver in the world. Right. We've given more of our prosperity to the world than anybody. Right. And, it, and it's, a, it's a blessing back to us, too, to have it. Because, like, we have our three children that we've been helping support right. for years. Yeah. I mean, and, and it's a 20-year program. And then they're supposed to be self-sufficient. And they're taught about God. And then they do this. They read their word. And they use the principles of God. It'll work anywhere you live. Any country, you will be blessed. Because they can't stop God's blessing. Another nuance that, that Hagen talks about in chapter, uh, what did I say? It was chapter six. Six, I believe. Yeah. Yes. He said here, not only will faith work by saying it, but faith will work in your heart, which is your spirit, with doubt in your head. So you got to realize your head could say, oh, I don't, I don't agree with that. But if you've got the, the word of God into your heart, and you could have you have the the believing in your heart you it will manifest anyway don't don't put if your mind saying oh i don't i don't know about this but your spirit saying yeah i agree with that i agree with the word of god so therefore you got to get that discernment there that you can have what you say in the in the spiritual because the right. spirit is right. where the power is. Right. So if you're sneezing in the grass and your mind saying, "Whoa, you're sneezing. You have allergies." Your heart who's, says, who's "No, report do you I'm believe? healed by the stripes of Jesus." And right. There, your heart an supersedes example. your your mind saying what it does and when yeah, it Yeah, your body does, saying, your "Oh, you're sneezing." You're like, that oh, it's it's uh uh, what, it's, what allergy, it season. allergy season, right? I don't even and like saying going, that. Nah, yeah, my spirit's going, no, 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 no. The word of God supersedes all that stuff, right? And so, and that's what and, moving mountains is. And, and it would be with anything, it would be with your finances. God, you say the bills can't be paid, and I, there's so many stories of people who throughout history have had miracles. People come with food, people come with money, people. Do all kinds of things you can. Or do. you may give a guy a good deal. Right. I mean, uh, you know, you own, uh, I don't know, something, and you, you want to, and Bless you're them. selling it, and you, and God says, "We'll sell it to him for a certain amount." Of, you, you have the voice of God, the voice of the Holy Spirit, saying, "Well, give it to him." Like I, I believe that's what happened with my fence out here. They got blown down. The guy, my Holy Spirit told me, "Well, I'll give it to this guy," and then I went to, I made a contract with another guy. I mean, a verbal contract. And then it came back. Well, but he the guy he, came back and gave me a better deal. And I'm going, well, yeah, well, God also, told me. So I, t I called him up and said, I got another. Yeah, another. but also the guy that you were going to do the f contract the first time said he really didn't know how to put the lock on the gate. So he it yeah, really so wouldn't have worked a, for him. There was a gray area there. Yeah, so I'm we kind of went, go through that. we want to have, because we, we have, right. a, well, as you know, we have our precious dog, Hollywood, which we yeah, don't, we want, don't want, want out. We want a locked gate. We want a locked yeah, gate. I have a code on my Right, on and, my we, we, and we have a swimming pool, so we wouldn't want a child to accidentally get in our yard either. We don't want the dog out or a child in who, right. unless there's a parent there. To, we don't mind children. We love children, too. We have grandchildren, but we, right. we want them safe, so you don't want them out by a pool if they don't know how to swim. You don't want right. them Right, yeah. Because so even though God there's already angels, told me. Oh, that's one of the things I, I think to know. There are angels. Angels do protect us, but God gave children parents for the parent to be the parent. Yeah, yeah. Say, not to no, say, don't do oh, that. well, we're going to not worry. That, we're in a kinda, hotel and we'll let the kid play and the kid gets in the pool and drowns. And I kind of did you know, what Abraham and Sarah did. 
I, I, God says, do it with this Ross guy. And, and, and then I got confused by my neighbor saying, well, this guy's a good guy and Russ hasn't come back with a price. So I jumped ship from God and I went to the other guy. And then the guy didn't know how and to put the the guy didn't in. know how to do it. Yeah, and so. so God was making me, hey, I told you to do it with Russ. And yeah. Russ was a better deal anyway. Yeah, but he, but he's yeah. Both guys were nice. I wouldn't say that. No, I'm not saying the other guy was bad. And the neighbor anything. had used him, and he it's fine. He that was his right. opinion. But we always we like man will give you opinions, but God always gives you the God right told, one. Like today, I don't know. I was just sitting in, in front of the pool, and there's all this trash in my pool, and I said, "Well, it sure be nice to have the the all the stuff to blow in front of me here, so I could scoop it up easily with my net." And that wasn't even 10 minutes later, the wind changed. It blew it right in front of me, right? Yeah, it blew it right, I don't know. The yeah. wind changed. It blew right in front of me. I'm going. And that's a simple oh, thing. This, to... this is, well, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Right, and I a... went and got my net and scooped it up. Yeah, but this Instead is of like it a... being all over my pool, it was all collected into one corner here. And I could scoop it up really easily. Right, and that that's using your faith. So, right. like you might... Like you might start off giving a nickel in the offering. Wherever you're at, you start. Well, and, and then you grow. And, and, you, and you grow. Listen and you for go. the voice of God right. saying, Well, not, maybe now a nickel's not so big because right, it's yeah. gotten. Maybe $20. Yeah, but you, you put it in, like you go, Okay, I'm going to trust God. It says, Bring your tithes. And maybe you quite aren't there. So, but you go, God you goes, Well, start. God said you could make your coffee at home instead of going to Starbucks. Don't go to Starbucks. Right. Give it up. That's like five or six dollars a thing or whatever. Don't right. go there. You can make a cup of coffee for a dollar. You save five dollars. Put that in the offering and watch and, and test me. It does say prove me. We're not well, testing it says me, here, prove in a mar- me. It says, uh, according to Mark eleven twenty three, you you're to believe that those things you say shall come to pass. And what will happen, and what will happen, Sooner or later, sooner or later, this is where I'm, where we're coming to. Sooner or later, you will have whatsoever you say. Right. When you say it in faith, you believe the word of God will manifest every time. God's word doesn't fall to the right, ground. Right, says, let every man be a liar, liar and God and, be right. true. Yeah, and God doesn't lie. God doesn't lie. You just got to come to that. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. If, God, if it's coming, uh, the world... Uh, whose report do you believe the is truth. the scripture? Truth wins. Truth wins. Right. Every truth. time. Truth, truth is the wins. word of God. And it always comes right. to Real. your benefit. If you if Real. you are believing the your your verb is believing the noun to come to fruition. Well, well and you know I like to do kind of like logic, like Yeah, I heard her say that the other day. That's really cool. Right. Well, like if you have well, it's kind of really like faith and truth. And the word really all equal each other. Because faith with believing and right. the word with believing and truth with believing equals health. And so then you can make them all, you can take away the believe and it'll be the word, faith, and truth equals health. So it's kind of neat. They're all like what gives you health. Or all gives you prosperity. That's she's my beautiful mind. <laughs> I love. <laughs> Remember I love the logic. movie Beautiful Mind. And I, and that's why I actually this study was very exciting to me because I like really researching and the fact that I learned really they didn't add and I always go well they didn't add Am to his name because his name was yeah. Abram it was Am and it wasn't because of Moses and the great I Am right like knowing Gotta that know it's the Hebrew Hebrew like the word and the significance was God first gave them the seed the word and then unfortunately they did get disturbed with what he said would happen I don't know why because I guess time got in the way or fear got in the way but then he came back which is something to stand on that it's there go back to the revelation Know that God's revelation is always true and it will happen. And when they change their name and they, and you maybe will say, I'm big money or I help You know healthy. something, that was something that was said to me back 15 years ago. One of my colleagues where I worked said, he, he you know, I did really well in, in my, I was a sales engineer or sales uh, account manager and all that stuff for, for 25 years. But anyway, 
Uh, I used to, it was amazing to some people that, that especially this guy, Jim, he was going, how do you do that? I said, well, I said, well, you know, it's, it's God every time. But anyway, he said, okay. I, and he started calling me big money, big money, hey, big money, hey, big money. And I'm going, so then the, and I kind of goes, you know, I really don't know the connection, but you call me big money. That's fine. I feel a little embarrassed when you say well, it. But really, it has to do but, with God's power making sales for you. You just and I know who just you didn't call on people that said no. You just somehow God would go go right, call on was, them and go God call on them. Did interact in my sales? I mean, he uh, for sure it had to be. There was no doubt in my mind, right, my wife's mind. Things would happen because God told me to go to see this person and ask the right questions, and he would say. And people would just, there was a, a draw, a kindred spirit there that well, would make well, the, me sell. I sold millions and millions of dollars well, of actually, stuff. Well, actually, the one I loved the best was you had this big bid, and, and I and you and said, laid pray, hands I on laid it. prayers on it. And it got, got hot, hot as a like, fire. Like an iron was pressing and on it. And, you could feel and it. I wasn't the low bidder, but and that was it, the one that that's, that the, won. The, the, the state agreed that this was oh, the best. Is she coming over here? No, 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 she's just, I thought maybe Hollywood was going to come say goodbye to you, but. So that's another thing I wanted to say. She's, she just did a spin and laid back can, down. We can have Hollywood come, but no, I, no, I, I believe that coming. the she's body of Christ needs to strive to know the Hebrew. The Hebrew is where the keys are for knowledge of God. And, and you know, I've known a lot of Jews and they are very into the, obviously they speak Hebrew a lot of times. All the I listen to some of the I don't listen to the rivals, but I on some of their websites I go and I listen to some you of. You can this. learn from them. About oh, I learned from, a lot from. And it has to do with the base the, word. The Jews, right? The base word and and God just set it up so unique, and it means a whole. Like when you think of the letter, it <sighs> mean, it means right. It's those, very those profound. Three de- definitions, but Yod Hey Vavad Hey. I remember Billy Brim saying that the real true name for Really, Jesus was yod He vod He, And I thought, <laughs> wow, that is so cool. And then we find out in this that it has H's in it, two H's, two right, but, but, pots, but, yod He vod He. But, but beyond that, it also represents the number five, and five is grace, and Jesus came and gave he grace. He was the grace the, of God to the, to the body, to the people. Well, and the other of, kind of neat of thing creation. is from the beginning of time, we go through, like, when Adam comes and it goes through all these, it says, for God, a day is like a thousand years and a yeah, thousand years like, like a day. day. And so we go through it all and we find Jesus is really born in day four. Day four, right. He's born in day four, but when it gets to day five, which is grace. The morning of right, day five. The morning of day five is when he he dies and he he's resurrected and we get salvation and we get grace. Right. And so like when we study all this, we get this from the Hebrew that five is significant because it's the fifth day when Jesus rose. Right. And so it's just really kind of cool. And Jesus brought well, grace. What's third day, isn't it? No, 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 no. You're, On the fifth missing. day. No, you're not, not not when he in the grave. I'm ta- he talking. died in he did raise in the third, third day. day. I'm talking about a day is like a thousand years. It, it was the fifth day in the time oh, in the, frame, in it was five thousand years. But oh, it's, five thousand years. It was the beginning of the five thousand oh, yeah. years, but it's it's the fifth day. So, like, right. with, that's why when you study Hebrew and all the stuff, and and you study like just happened with the Passover dinner, like they break the cracker and it's the broken Christ. And well, I don't know that they three know. crackers and the middle one is broken. Right. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, but. The Jews are going, well, I don't understand it. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Why is Isaac always broken? I've heard, him, I've heard him have, some of them have said that. Oh, and I, I do. But it's I, not Isaac, it's Jesus. And then the God other, hey, Babad hey. Then the, another thing is like, Jesus came, like Abraham, who he tithed first to, well, that we have record of, he may have tithed before that, it was with Melchizedek. Melchizedek, right. And when right. Melchizedek came out, he came out with the bread and wine, which is symbolic of, the Holy Spirit. Well, it's right? symbolic of communion. It's the bread and the spirit. So I think that's really kind of cool that he, it's just like all that. Really, when you look at, the, this is my one last thing because we're probably, it's time, time for us to go, is 
really how Sarah and Abraham are mirror images of what is going to occur with Mary and Jesus and Joseph. Right. Like she had an immaculate kind of birth, not exactly as yeah. like, like Mary, but it was. She Sarah was had an immaculate time. birth. Right. So she had faith and got had hers right. happen. Um, what God with the wanting him to sacrifice Isaac. It's just all right. the thing. It's, it's just a mirror, a mirror image a, of what's coming down through the Bible and, God, and the promise. And that's why Abraham was considered righteous because of his actions and his faith. Yes. And so the righteousness and the grace that God gave, it's just all so because cool and ties together. Against hope against hope, meaning the world, he was believing against the, what, the, what his body was saying uh, against... Uh, what God had said. He right. was making a decision here between the two, the world or, and we do that every day. We need to make a decision between the word, the f- flesh, the physical versus what the word of God said. And if you don't know what the word of God is, then you're kind of a ship without a paddle because our paddle is the word of God. Right. So anyway, with that, we're going to go, we're going to try to live with the faith like we're going to call those things that be not as though they were like Abraham did. I'm the father of many nations. So yeah. you're going to call yourself big money or you're well, going to call them money. healthy, healthy, whatever, yeah. healthy, he- healthy, wealthy, whatever, right. all the things you need to right. do. And then you might not, and you can call me big money, but you, I don't might, mind. you might not want to say it in front of everybody, <laughs> but you definitely can say it, put notes on your refrigerator at home, on your mirror, in your bathroom. Right. Um, say it to yourself, put it in your calendar so when you check in the morning what you have to do, it reminds you, oh, I'm more than a conqueror. You can put it all over the place. There's all kinds of ways. So we'll go, we're will go. we going to have to say goodbye cause yeah, even though yeah. we don't want to, but yeah. we're going to do truth. Whoop. We do it this way. <laughs> it's backwards. Truth wins. Truth wins. Whoops, wrong way. No, truth wrong wins. finger. Truth wins. I don't know. Truth wins. Uh, <laughs> God is absolutely good. God is absolutely good. And we'll, we're more than conquerors through Christ Jesus, we'll see the you, word. We'll see you again. We'll be posted next Wednesday. And on Thursday, we post another chapter of the book. I um, hope you're enjoying it. And when we're finished with the book, hopefully you'll put a nice review on Amazon about the book too. Right. But And tell your friends about the book because it's for free. Yeah, and it's a good, it's a, she wrote it really well. And it, it'll teach you a and lot. And God told her to write it. <laughs> right, and it'll teach you, it's kind of, yeah, it'll, it's a good teaching book that's kind of, it's not, it's not like a Bible book. It's it's an adventure, no, suspense, no. it's a thriller. It's, You'll uh, like it. It's, uh. More than you yeah, can imagine. It, it'll it's, give you a whole look, new look in the world. Yeah, yeah. I so, would say it's Anyway, cool. we're saying bye-bye, see you bye. next week.